It's good to have you both, Margie. I don't mean to, for you to, Andrew, Andrew, I don't mean for you to respond to every uh, individual tick, but I wonder what you make of some of these bounces. Uh, GameStop's up 33, Tesla's up 45 bucks this morning. Well, I think buying the dip is not dead yet. And I think that ultimately lows is when there is exhaustion in some of these high flyers that no one wants to buy the dip. And I don't think we're quite there yet. We're in the process, but the fact that they, you know, continue to bounce says buying the dip is is not dead yet. Usually when bubbles burst, you know, it ends with exhaustion, not with a desire to try to buy the low. Right. So you are still looking for you want you want to see a flush of sorts, even though the drawdown itself has been dramatic in the medium term. Sure, that's true. But the VIX, you know, there's not there. I, I don't see the classic signs of capitulation yet where the VIX, uh, you know, hits 40 financial conditions, shoot up high yield spreads, you know, blow out. I haven't seen that. That's those are usually capitulatory lows. And <clears throat> the fact that people are try, still trying to buy the dip tells me, you know, we're just not quite there yet. I think there's plenty of reason to be, you know, positive for the year off these lows. I'm just not sure we've hit the lows yet. Margie, how do you see it? Do we have further to fall? Uh, no, I think we're at pretty uh, fair value. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Fed pulls back from their very aggressive rhetoric and uh, targets something much more mild for further increases. So I think that'd be very supportive of stocks and fixed income, too. So where would you be putting money to work right now, then, Margie? Well, right now, you have to like the equity market because outlook for earnings is pretty good across the board. We've had the price earnings ratios come down over interest rate fears. So I think those companies that have a pretty good outlook are, are very attractive. And even junk bonds look pretty attractive here. They're offering about 7.5%, and they're trading at maybe 5 or $0.08 cents discount from face value. So that says there's good opportunity here, too. So, Andrew, since you see things a little bit differently, at least in the near term, um, how would you be counseling investors to be positioning themselves right now? Well, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with what Martin just said, which is, look, when you have a Fed that's reducing liquidity, it takes the tide goes out and it brings down the most speculative elements of the markets. And we're seeing that with NASDAQ and, the, the, you know, the Uber growth stocks, cryptocurrencies. And inevitably, there is collateral damage that inflicts the broader markets. And it's at that juncture that you have to go in and say, should this stock be down this much given, you know, the fundamentals? And so I agree that absolutely this is a wonderful time to find companies where they're down a lot, but their businesses have not changed as nearly as much. But that's that's the process, the bottoming process that we're going through. And all I'm saying is short term. I'm just not sure we're at the you know mm -hmm. the low but this is this is how you make money you buy into companies where their stock prices short term have diverged dramatically from the fundamentals and i think it's getting more and more attractive and i we're finding a lot of great opportunities